Good morning and welcome again to our beautiful Basilica here at Carmel Mission. And you're joining us uh, this morning for our prayer message. We've just celebrated the wonderful feast of the body and blood of our Savior Jesus Christ, often called Corpus Christi, the body of Christ. And so uh, during uh, the coming week, most of our prayer <coughs> messages will be connected with the Eucharist. And of course, it's especially uh, poignant for us, isn't it, that uh, as a community we've been unable to come together uh, physically. Um, but that will soon be changing uh, the next couple of weeks. And um, meanwhile, we have created our, our virtual community where we still form that uh, Eucharistic uh, body of Christ. And as you know, Father Rodrigo has led us, each, each time we have a streaming Mass, he's led us in an act of spiritual communion. So I thought it'd be nice to maybe reflect on uh, the provenance and, and the meaning of what, it is, what is an act of spiritual communion. St. Thomas Aquinas, it was, who defined spiritual communion as an ardent desire to receive Jesus in the Holy Sacrament. While this practice may be new to some of us during this pandemic, it's certainly not new to our church. Many saints have spoken or written about the, the profound benefits of spiritual communion. St. Therese of Jesus wrote in her book, uh, The Way of Perfection, when you do not receive communion and you do not attend Mass, you can make a spiritual communion, which is a most beneficial practice. By it, the love of God will be greatly impressed on you. Uh, Saint Padre Pio, uh, Saint Jose Maria Escriva, Saint uh, Jean Vianney, and uh, Pope Saint John Paul II are among the many of our saints who have promoted the spiritual communion as a way for us to grow closer to our loving God. In his encyclical, Ecclesia de Eucharistia, uh, John Paul II wrote, unlike any other sacrament, the mystery of communion is so perfect that it brings us to the heights of every good thing. Here is the ultimate good of every human desire, because here we attain God, and God joins himself to us in the most perfect union. Precisely for this reason, it is good to cultivate in our hearts a constant desire for the sacrament of the Eucharist. This was the origin of the practice of spiritual communion, which has happily been established in the church for centuries and recommended by saints who were masters of the spiritual life. <clears throat> the act of spiritual communion is used by the Catholic Church today, and uh, the one that is used most frequently uh, was written by St. Alphonsus Liguri, uh, an 18th century priest who had a special devotion to the presence of our Lord in the Blessed Sacrament. It's worth noting that the practice of spiritual communion is not exclusive to our Catholic Church. Other members of our Christian family, like Anglicans, uh, Lutherans, Methodists, also share this tradition with us. So spiritual communion is not limited to the Sunday Mass. Indeed, we yearn to receive Jesus at all times and in all places. So I invite you now to join me in the act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. 
As always, if you have some prayer requests that you would like to send Father Rodrigo or myself, uh, we will be happy to take them with our own uh, prayer intentions and our daily Masses. Just go to our parish website, carmelmission.org, and press the prayer request button. I wish you and your loved ones um, good health, uh, profound peace, and uh, much happiness. Thank you.